Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Again, I want to welcome everyone via Zoom, via conference call to our service, Vision Christian Ministries. I want to thank some of our new people here, Ms. Hunt, Ms. Denise Hunt. We want to welcome you to our conference call again. I want to also, again, acknowledge uh, last week anniversary of two of our lawyer viewers here, uh, Faye and, and Ed Sutton, on their 23rd wedding anniversary on last Sunday. We wish 23 more good years for you, and it's all a blessing here. You know, we've been doing this series of teaching on walking in truth and, and breaking strongholds. And, and one of the things that I realized that, that in order for us to uh, uh, have these things in our lives, that we must, man we must maintain a state of truth in order for these things to, to coexist with our existing state. Now, I use the term existing state because, see, sometimes you don't know what state you're in, but even though the, the word tells us to be content, no matter what state we're in. But sometimes as believers, we fluctuate. And because we fluctuate, it's because we allow certain things to enter in. And I, and I use the term certain worldly things that enter in. And, and, and in order for us to maintain a state, we've got to make sure that the word takes preeminence over our lives. And that just can't be on Sundays, as we was talking about earlier with the Zoom group. That has to be a 24-7 challenge for believers. You know, you what you eat. And sometimes what you eat can be good for you or can be bad for you. But it depends on what, how you allow it to manifest itself throughout your spiritual life. You know, and, 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 and dealing with this right here, it, it took me back to the one thing that, that Jesus did and did, what Jesus promised. And, and I was just writing some notes to myself here. And, 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 and the things that I'm realizing that as believers, that, that, in our prosperous state, we can't prosper without walking in, in the truth. And the truth has to be a truth that we've got to acknowledge that exists. I gave her some challenges last week to talk about it over there in Romans. But when you think about it, there is no spiritual reason why any believer should feel alone or feel comfortless. Think about that for a minute unless he or she is not walking in God's truth. There's no reason why we should feel alone or, 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 or that, that no one cares. God cares. But the challenge is we allow things to creep in to, to dissuade us or, 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 or take us away from what the real truth is all about in our lives. If you can Go over to the book of John, and I know you can, so just turn over to the book of John, chapter 14. It's something I was looking at here, and, and it was something that Jesus had spoke about. You know, I always talk about spirituality, that the true worship of God must worship him in spirit and in truth. I even speak about how even your existence, because you are spirit, the real you is a spirit, that has a mind or a soul that lives in a body. This body, it, 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 it's, it's, the, it's the outfit of the uniform that allows us to exist here on the earth. But spiritual beings, we, we, we inhabit this body. This body is a part of our coexistence here on the earth. But it's not really the real us. Because when this body goes back to the earth, our spirit rise up and be with the Heavenly Father, who is a spirit. This is why he said the true worship. They said God's a spirit. And those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. But the thing about it, what's always challenged is the spiritual you that dictates how the fleshly you operates. And we have to remind ourselves of that right there. You know, as I think about this, and, and over in the, in the book of uh, John 14, Go, go over to verse 15. Let's, let's look at this for a minute because I've been writing myself uh, some notes here. And that one note I said, it says, if you love me, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even, and it's this term again I keep bringing up, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot, and underline that part, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth 
worship him. But you know him, but he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He goes on, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now, now, in just those two verses alone, we realize that the world can't receive God's spirit of truth. Therefore, the world, world cannot receive the, the feeling of not being left alone. Now, believers, when you find yourself as a believer, born-again believer, feeling like you're all alone and you're comfortless, maybe you've allowed too much world to enter in. Maybe you need to cut loose of some of them worldly sandwiches that you've been consuming based on what you see, what you hear, and what your spirit now thinks based on what it's been consuming. See, we can consume a lot of stuff that's not of God, and before you do it, we're thinking like the things that we've been eating. The Bible says, now what goes into a man's mouth that the Bible what comes out. But what we put in determines what comes out. You have to understand that, that you've got to guard your heart because once it's getting to your, your mind, when you, you hear this expression, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Well, it is, especially when your spirituality is supposed to be governing your mind because that's what leads to your heart and that's what depicts you. As a man think of in his heart, so is he. <clears throat> now, in this passage, verse 18 says, Jesus, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. Now, in, in that expression alone, there's a difference between you being alive and you living. As believers, Jesus said he come to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. So he just don't want you to exist. He wants you to be able to live the abundant life that he promised you as a believer here on earth. And therefore, you should not be worried or stressed out because now you've taken the pressure off you. Your word says, Father. Your word says, Father. You will not leave me ignorant. Your word, your word says, Father. You will never put more on me than I can bear. Your word said you come to give me life, Father, and give it to me more abundantly. Your word said this battle is not mine, but yours. See, you, you have to think in those realms. You have to think in those realms based on what God has said. And I can imagine God up in heaven just smiling and looking down and saying, You hear my child? You hear my daughter? You hear my son? They're trusting me. They're believing in me. But we don't always do that. We allow, we allow the consumption of this worldly stuff to come in and bring the darkness that really helps try to diminish the light that you're supposed to have in your life. We're supposed to be the light of the world, not the darkness of the world. Last time I checked Satan, he was the father and author of darkness. But the challenge is with your flesh, and the scripture says, men love darkness. That's a challenge. Why? Because when they operate in the dark, they figure that the light, which is God, don't see it. Well, I keep telling y'all, God was the original uh, uh, manufacturer of uh, night vision. And creating the earth, he looked at the darkness of the deep, and he said, he put his spirit on that, and he said, let there be light. Whenever God's presence is there, it's going to be light. But how do we get that? He said to the Holy Spirit, let's read this. Let's just go and read this. Verse 20. At that day, you shall know what I am. You shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that have my commandments and keep of them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him. And will manifest, he says here, myself to him. In other words, he'll let you know I'm always there. It's a continuous process. But that's based on you having a love for him and trusting him. He says here. It goes on and look what verse 23 says. Jesus, and Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him, the scripture says.
says, and make our abode with him. He said that he's going to be present with you. He's going to live inside of you. So any darkness come, come there, the light, his presence will always override it and keep it from having a toehold in your life. That's what he's saying. What hinders that, brothers and sisters? What hinders that? Well, when you have too much darkness, when you consume too much darkness, you bring it into your life yourself. This body is your house. God said, I want to reside with you, but I want to reside with you based on the light. I can enter those rooms where, where my light, where my presence, where my word is, but that darkness that you're trying to consume, I'm not there. You have to allow me in. You have to let me in. You have to put that part of your life into my space. He says here, based on loving him and keeping his commandments. I, I, I read here and I was writing a note here. In verse 23, it says here, Jesus speak, speaks about God and Jesus will begin to live with you inside of you, but it's based on your obedience to his word. We all know obedience is better than sacrifice. We, You know, you, you can go to church and you say you give this and you tithe that and so forth, but that don't make you obedient. See, everybody who obeys don't make them obedient. Obedience is a state. Obey to obey is an action. Every time as a little boy, when I'm around my parents, I obeyed. The challenge was, what did I do when they weren't present? Was I still in that obedient state? You have to answer that for yourself. See, there's a tendency to think that even as believers, that, that uh, and the scripture said, we aren't even with our lips, but our hearts are from him. We're not in that state of obedience. Sure, we know how to do whole obey. That's an act. But obedience is a lifestyle. Everyone who obey does not mean necessarily the obedient. You ever notice that when you train your animals, they never talk about obey school. You send your pet to, you send them to obedience school because they don't want them to just obey for a moment. They want to be obeyed every day, twenty four seven. As I was reading the scripture here, and, I, and I'm just writing notes to myself, and I'm just sharing what God has God been dealing with three right here. He used this term in verse 24. He says, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the world which hear is not mine. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. He that loveth me, let me repeat that again. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. See, it's, a, it's about a love thing. Why? Because God is love. When you define God, God is love. God is love. Bottom line. The word said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It goes on, it says, These things... Have I spoken to you, being yet present with you? Verse 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, underline that, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. You know, in order for you to remember something, you've got to first hear about it. Or it's got to be first been introduced to you. Or you've got to first have read it. Faith comes by hearing, but hearing by the word of God. But, but if you don't allow yourself to get into the word, to read the word, to hear the word, how can God's spirit bring anything in remembrance to you because there's nothing to remember? The challenge that, that we have to realize that in order to become, what I use the term, overcomers, we've been programmed by, programmed by the world for so long, you know, from a child up to a certain age, that, that those things that we've been programmed, they have a tendency to take root and have taken root in our lives that, that until we overcome them, they're still there. 
There's still things, believers, that even though you, you've heard about the word and you've read the word, that there are things in your life that you have not overcome because you have not allowed enough word to get in there to bring in remembrance of not only who you are, but whose you are. That's the challenge. What are you saying, Pastor? You are not allowing God to have his continual manifestation present in your life. That's why sometimes you feel alone. You feel comfortless. That's why you feel that you got to do this and do that on your own rather than trust God. That's why you're trying to fight these battles on your own rather than not realizing that he will bring back to you that this battle, uh-uh, stop, hold up. This battle is not yours, but mine. Trust in me. What, what do you mean trust in you? My scripture says trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Acknowledge him, not the situation, not the people who betrayed you, not the people who you think are going to help you. He said, acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he shall direct thy path. When you're seeking direction, sometimes we're seeking it in the wrong areas, from the wrong people, based on what the world says we should do, rather than what God is saying you should do. That's a challenge for believers. That's the challenge for all of us. There has to be a constant manifestation. He says here, he says here, and, and, and if you look at verse 22, go back to verse 22, Judas unto him is scary, not as not scary, Lord, now how is it thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? The world is full of darkness, but those who are in the light, who walk in the light, those are the ones going to have my presence constantly with them. This is what he's saying. This is what he's saying to you. That that the manifestation, his presence is there. He, he goes over here, he says here, in verse 24, and I'll drop back down again, he that loveth me not, keep him not my saying. And the words which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things I have spoken to you, being yet present with you. In other words, he's there. He goes on here. He says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, verse 26, whom the Father was sent in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you, then he says in verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace, I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. He goes on, he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. When your heart is troubled, that's when we resort to our worldly instinct of doing things outside of God's word. But the beauty is when God's word is present in your life, it will bring back his remembrance and trust in the Lord. No, trust in the Lord. When you've done all you can do, stand. That manifestation at the time necessary, the time needed, is so crucial to maintaining your continuous walk with God. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a reminder about what state. And, 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 Arrogancy never gets you where you need to be. Quickly, turn over to John 10th chapter. You're in the book of John. Just turn to the 10th chapter here. Look at the 10th chapter here. Begin to the first verse. It says, Verily, verily, John 10th chapter, begin to the first verse. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth by the door into the sheepfold. Okay, let me repeat that again. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Verily, verily, I read it wrong, rather. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up by some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Oh, huh, what is he talking about here? What the fuck? Now, you know, you got sheep, right? And Jesus supposed to be your shepherd. But you always have other things, other situations, or even other folk, folk trying to enter into your life, trying to backdoor their way into your life, based on the challenges that you're going through. They're one of the first, you, you better believe that when you're trying to do what's right, 
There's some who will say, you know, you don't have to do it this way. I got another solution for you. No, you need to. Th this is how we can get this. Let me tell you this. And then, then they'll tell you, don't worry about it. God knows your heart. Yeah, God knows your heart is not with them right then. That's what God knows. But, but look what it says here. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. God's always up front. God's going to always walk in truth. Anyone who's trying to backdoor things or trying to do things, they're not walking in the truth. They're trying to backdoor it. God comes through the front door and he comes boldly there. You would even have people who are trying to backdoor your life. You probably have people coming to your life trying to tell you it's okay. That's, oh, it's not okay. There's only one way as a believer and that's God's way. Any other way is a facade. Any other way will be detrimental to you having and receiving God's blessing. I'm not saying anybody else's blessing. God's blessing manifests itself in your life. This is what Jesus talked about, the manifestation. Because the world can't even receive God's blessing. They won't manifest. But it says here, but he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opened up, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Now, now, even though it's another teaching, not all believers act like sheep. Yes, 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 I, I hate to bust your bubble. Some of us, we can be contrary, we can be stubborn, we can be into our own self, and yet it's still time, oh, I love the Lord. No, oh, if you love the Lord, you become a sheep. You have to remove that stuff. God, he the Holy Spirit. He likes people who are in a humility into a humble state, but yet and still, you know, goats, donkeys, it's hard for them to have a shepherd. Why? Because they're still trying to do stuff on their own. They're trying to do If the Lord is my shepherd, 23rd Psalm, I shall not want. If you're still wanting, Maybe because you have not allowed God to become your shepherd, or maybe you've lost your sheep way of living. It says here, to him the port open, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep, Jesus, by name, and leadeth them out. If you're not being led out, maybe you need to get back in your sheep state. It goes on, it says, and when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. In order to know somebody's voice, you got to spend time with them. Cut and dry. <clears throat> Excuse me. And a stranger, the verse 5 says, And a stranger <clears throat> will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. Let me ask you this. The people that sometimes we need to be running from, based on what's inside of us or the world that's maybe still there, we'll run too. We're looking at a, a country right now that instead of being sheep, they become donkeys. And instead of running for some of the stuff that they're hearing, they're running to it. Believers, we're followers of Christ. We're, we're, we're believers of love. One of the two greatest commandments that God says in his word is to, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and to love thy neighbor. Those are the two greatest commandments. Why? Because God is love. But the manifestation of God's way of living has to be through God's word. And those who spend time with God, they become a part of the sheepfold. And because they're part of the sheepfold, every time you go forth, the shepherd will go before you to lead and direct you. If you're not, if you find yourself falling into pits and, and the potholes and stuff, who's leading you? What are you allowing to lead you? Jesus will never lead you down a wrong path. Do you find yourself always in a state of still warning and feeling not heavy? Maybe because you have not chosen Jesus to be your shepherd. The Bible says, and you all know the scriptures, your grandparents even taught that. They may have not been what you may call educated people. They may not have been people with a deep Bible background, but they knew that scripture. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It goes on to say, he make me lie down in green pastures to restore my soul.
my mind, my will, and my emotions. Brothers, there's so much to this, and I know that, that there's so much I want to get to, but as usual, I just run out of time. You've got to begin to ask yourself, what am I going to allow truth to really be a part of my life in totality, not impartiality? I want to walk in truth on Sundays, but not on Saturday or Friday night. Just like obedience, it's a lifestyle. Brothers and sisters, we have the victory. But it has to be exercised based on our thoughts and our internal beings. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus of the anointed Jesus. Jesus said, I can do nothing of my own, but what that I hear of my Father. He told tell us, he said, you know, when you love me and you keep my Father's commandments, that me and my Father will begin to reside with you. Can you imagine having God live, living in your house, your spiritual house, even in your natural house? Can you imagine what could, any, who could, who could break in, who could break in, what can come in, what can destroy the, your home, your lifestyle, if God is present all the time there? Does that happen? Yes, yeah, Job! The devil said, you're going to hit your problem. No, he had God's presence with him. God is not a respected person. But God honors his word. If your word is God's word is living with you, then God's word wants to walk with you. God's word wants to be the armor that you bear. Not just on Sunday, but 24-7. That's what it is. Brothers and sisters, I got to close, but I want to pray. I want to ask you to begin to take inventory of yourself. <clears throat> that you begin to allow that word <coughs> to help you in all the things you do. Father, as I come before you today, I take authority over <coughs> the physical challenges that's trying to attack me right now. Because this word's going to get out. And I'm going to allow it to get out based on my trust in you. Thank you for clearing the truth up, Father. Help us, Father God, to walk in truth. Help us, Father God, to abide in truth. Help us most of all to live in the truth that the world may see your light inside of us. Father, I thank you today. I thank you for all the hearers and the listeners of your God. Allow your truth to reign supreme 24-7. Not some of the time, but all the time. Help us to be constant recipients of that word, of that truth. Help us to know, Father, if you are for us, who or what can be against us. Lord, I thank you today. I thank you for your manifestation constantly inside of us, Father. I thank you for your truth always residing in us. I thank you for your love taking its rightful part in each and every one of our individual lives. I praise you today. I thank you today. I acknowledge you today, Father. And I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for the victory we have with you and you and through you this day, through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say, Amen. Amen.